it was hard for you to find a place, and even for people who are supportive of diverse casting, they might not be necessarily right for a role. So you said, you know what, I'm going to take matters into my own hand. Yeah. So what did you do? After you've made that statement and put it out in the universe, what did you do next? What did I do next? Um, I got introduced to someone called Ed Smith. Mm -hmm. Ed Smith was the founder and director of a group in Buffalo, a black drama, the Buffalo Black Drama Workshop. Mm -hmm. And I, I got in, introduced to him through an organization I belong to, um, and, and they, they, they said, you should meet Ed Smith. You know, he has this theater. You know, you like theater? And, and I said, okay. So um, I met Ed, mm -hmm. and um, he invited me to Buffalo, and he, he said, well, I've got this theater going, and um, you know, you should come. We're doing this, we're doing that. So I went to Buffalo, mm -hmm. and um, met Ed, and, and saw his little workshop and everything, and um, saw some of his productions. Mm -hmm. And he became my mentor. He became the person to, to whom I would, would seek you know, knowledge mm -hmm. about theater. Yeah. And we began to talk and, and so on. And he says, you know what? I know, to, I, I know George, he knew George Luscombe because um, actually there were productions that, that George would ask Ed to direct, mm -hmm. you know, and he would come down from Buffalo and direct certain productions for him. Right, right. So uh, the connection w was really enriched because he brought his own company down. We arranged that, okay, let's have a production and see if Toronto is ready for black professional theater. Mm -hmm. And he brought his production of Who's Got His Own and the whole lock, stock, and barrel <laughs> sets everything wow. from Buffalo wow. yeah, to Toronto. And I don't have a theater to accommodate him. <laughs> <laughs> it's my living room that has to be <laughs> accommodate, like, say, maybe 17 people or something mm -hmm. like this, you know. Yeah. And, you know, a, a little, it's, it's funny that if you don't know about things, it doesn't bother you, mm -hmm. you know. So, so you, go, you approach things very naively, mm -hmm. and, and things happen. So at that time, there was a, a restaurant called the Underground Railroad here okay. with Salome Bay as, uh, um, and her husband used to run the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. And it was very popular because they, they had come from the States and, and, and people, any visitor from the States always go to the Underground Railroad restaurant, yeah. you know. So they were known. And when I was deciding how to, do I accommodate this whole theater company, mm -hmm. they stepped in and said, look, we will help you. That's amazing. You know, and... and like an underground railroad stuff. <laughs> yes. It's, you know, you know back yeah. to the same one. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. and, and they stepped in. So some of the people, they, they came with the, the whole set and stuff like that. Some people stayed at my place. Some stayed at the underground railroad place. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we managed. Mm -hmm. And we did one production of Who's Got His Own. Mm -hmm. It was held, we got the Unitarian Church, which was on St. Clair, right. St. Clair and Avenue Road there, right. 175 St. Clair wow. Avenue West. <laughs> wow, very good. And uh, we packed the house. There was not one seat empty. Mm -hmm. And how did that happen? We made some flyers. Yeah. I made these flyers in my living room mm -hmm. that um, Black Theatre Canada in, in, you know, with Black Buffalo Black Drama Workshop will present Who's Got His Own. Right. Um, I went about giving flyers to barbershops, hairdressing salons, mm -hmm. restaurants, wherever. By foot, yeah, <laughs> you exactly. know, churches, mm -hmm. you know, and he said, "What's this?" I said, "Well, 
It's a play. Mm -hmm. So in the Jamaican barbershop, they say, you mean a pantomime? I said, not quite, but <laughs> it's going to be a little better, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. and it's a little upscale from that. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay. And you know, they came. Mm -hmm. People came, ordinary people from the community yeah. who had never seen anything like that. They came. Yeah. What was the play about? Who's got his own? It was a, about a black family that, um, who's the, 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 the father of the family had, had, had died. Mm -hmm. and, and they were having all the, the discussions after his death. Mm -hmm. and, and this young son who, who was um, a young man um, that didn't have a good relationship with his father, you know. Mm -hmm. He, he, he sort of just blurted out, you know, his whole, he said, well, in a way, you know, it, it's better that way and stuff like that. So, so there was, it's about a family mm -hmm. um, going through the, the, the pains and, and, and the sort of, um, the, the, the sort of efforts of rebuilding um, mm -hmm. a relationship, you know, and giving the, the younger children something to hold on to so it mm. was about this black family and that kind of probably resonated with this trying to create a, a family of a theater company yes and try yes. to give uh, you know a yeah and uh, it, or something. It, it it was it was accepted and and people loved it and, and as a matter of fact that's when i met robin yes because um he reviewed the play he, he came, um, Robin was a journalist of some sort. He was working with the, there's a paper called the Tribune, the mm -hmm. Tribune, he said it was, you know, like a gorilla paper. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he reviewed the play and he remembered it very well. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time that um, I met Robin Brion. Robin Brion. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, he, and he's had a connection with the theater and with you for for many years. And what were some of the things after he met you at that theater company? Uh, he obviously got attached to the idea of Black Theater Canada. Um, actually, um, he went about his his business. He was still living in San Francisco. Oh, really? Uh, yes, but oh, he used to be okay. coming coming back and forth, hmm. and then. Um, he came, I think, to live in Toronto somewhere um, towards the 80s, mm -hmm. and um, he, he kept in touch with the theater's work and what we were doing in, right. in, 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 you know, all the time. So at one point, I really needed someone to, to, who knows about the theater and who is also sensitive to what we were doing. Mm -hmm. and, and Robin was right there, was right there. and um, so he came in uh, on the staff at, in 1981. Right. But before that happened, you also got in touch with June Faulkner? Is June Faulkner, right? yes. She was instrumental in, in um, helping me to, to learn the ropes right. of administrating right. a theater because yeah. I, I didn't study theater administration, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah, and um, because my idea was, oh, I'm, I, I'll, I'll be an actor. Yeah. What, what do I have to do with what? What are you talking about? Raising funds? <laughs> <laughs> going to the councils? Mm -hmm. Writing letters? Oh, mm -hmm. and then I had to learn that what I have to do is really yeah. <laughs> all this sort of thing. Yeah. Administration. So June was very helpful. She was the secretary then for for George Luscombe's, right. and she really helped me. She said, "Okay, you have to form an organization. You have to get people to be your board of directors, right. and you have to incorporate, and mm -hmm. you have to become a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. And 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 you know, you have to do a lot of writing of letters to ask people." Uh, to help you and to support you and, and this and it became a whole school again. Yeah, this, yeah. You know. a complete education and yes. full-time job. Yeah, full-time job, yeah. full-time jobs, yeah, okay. <laughs> wearing many hats. Now, I have here, you were you had Austin Clark as a member of your board? 
Austin Clark was one of the first members of, of my board. Yeah. Ying Hope, Alderman yeah. Ying Hope, Ying Hope. Was, yeah. was also there. Um, Frank Lee Beck. Um, right. Len people. Gibson. Len Gibson, yes. Yeah. Bless his heart. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Tell me about these people. Tell me about Len. Len, Len at that point had um, a dance school. Right. He was always, always a dance teacher. Um, very lovely man. Um, mm. You know, sensitive to training young people. He was his whole heart was for teaching young people. You know, the art right. of dance, yeah. in, in all forms of dance. He, he, he taught. You know, I, I myself took some from him. You know, there was tap dancing, and then there was, right. you know, contemporary dance, and you know, he taught it all. Yeah. He was a very wonderful person. Yeah. And Ying Hope, tell me about Alderman that. Ying Hope was then um, a councillor uh, at the City Hall. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how did I, yes, um, he was someone who, um, I think, uh, he, he was the councillor for our district where we were situated. Right. And um, so, so I sort of wrote to him because <laughs> that was June's suggestion. She says, you know, write, write to these people, you know, just ask them to be to be a member of your board. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. Okay. And, and, you know, she said, choose people, you know, you don't know them, but, mm -hmm. but they will know of you. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, right. and so I did. So, and he, he welcomed the idea. Right. And um, he saw that it would be helpful to have his name there too, you know, yeah. because it, it all count. Yeah. You know, it yeah. all counts. Um, so you had some artists on your board, you had mm -hmm. some choreographers. And you also had some people in the community to help out as well. Uh, Jeff Henry? Jeff Henry um, was also a, a, a man who founded a, a theater, a black theater, as well, a little bit after I did. Um, he, he had come from Montreal yeah. and was then living in Toronto. And of course, he's from Trinidad. Yeah. So I know of Jeff from a long time. Yeah. And um, so I just said, uh, you know, I, I have to get in touch with, with Jeff and just, you know, just yeah. c counsel with him uh, as to what, I, what I'm doing. And, and we were doing the same thing in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so he became one of the people. And tell me about Daniel Cal Calderon. Mm -hmm. Daniel Calderon is, hails from Dominica, the island of Dominica. He was a person quite um, capable of um, public relations and, and uh, in the artistic field, you know. He was a man that, that was very well versed in, in music, in Caribbean music, like he knows everything about reggae and, and stuff like that, and, and also th theater but on a community level, mm -hmm. you know. He had worked extensively in Dominica I in the arts. So, so he, he, he himself got in touch with me, you know, mm -hmm. because anything that was happening, he also knew about it, you right. know. There were these kinds of people who were, were on the ball wherever, you know, the, right. that kind of, a, you know, <laughs> media-minded people. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and he came on board working with the theater at some point as well you know, is that administrating, yes.